years, we back because they said the 90s is whack. You know what I'm saying? Get off with that shit. A whole lot of shit in the 90s was fine. I was born in the 2000s, so I'm a 2000 baby. But you know, the clothes was hard. Martin was funny and shit, my favorite TV show. Damn, Freak Nick was out here in Atlanta. So you know, all your mamas was getting freaky and shit. And then you could cheat on your hoe without getting caught up and shit. So the 90s was a good ass time. But one thing these old heads can't let go is this bald headed ass nigga named Michael Jordan. The 90s, when it come to basketball, is long gone. And these niggas be trying to live their heyday when a nigga could do a simple ass under the basket layup and they act like that nigga just dumped from the three point line. You feel me? Them niggas be capping and shit. So let's get into this shit. Recently in three, on media, two, big time one. Trends for now, because I'm going to see this shit. I've been saying this shit for years. And this entire movement, the entire gimmick. Now that shit hard, I ain't gonna cap. Through cherry picked clips. If he did that now, that'd be hard, but we got niggas on the bench doing that. that. Era. Watch your boy MJ bring it up with no left. Check this out. What is Damn, he nigga. Pass the ball. See, we, that nigga smacking niggas on the back of the head and shit. We're doing the same shit he used to do. And LeBron would have never did that. We hey, you return and we match it. I guess you could call that an analysis per se, but in my view, the worst type of sports fan and NBA fan. And guys like that, If you knew, go on, subscribe. We're trying to get to 500. If there's not 45 threes per game, mm -hmm. centers taking threes, a million isos, they don't think that is legit basketball. And really, this entire trend is just desperation to discredit an entire era. And here's the funny thing. The 1990s, yes, was a decade time period. But the players in the 90s, there was crossover from the 80s into the The 90s, reason why they love the 90s is because the 80s, the basketball shit was about the end. Era. All the niggas was crackheads. Like Jordan, Malone, Stockton, Shaq, Weber, KG, Vince Carter, Iverson, Ray Allen. No, my nigga AI, Cash, he's Hill, both 2002. Players. They either came in the 80s, 90s, and within the 2000s, or even 2010. Look at my nigga KG, he's from the crib, and six, success in all those decades. If you're gonna call the 1990s era trash, <coughs> a guy like Shaquille O'Neal, who was drafted in 93, played seven years in the 90s. How could that guy dominate all the way to 09, who's Damn. a star with Phoenix? Look at Kevin Garnett, his second year in the NBA, 1997, was an all-star. 2013 at 37, also an all-star. Even going further back, John Stockton, drafted 1984, was an all-star in 2000 at age 38. Carl Malone, his Carl Malone, teammate, Malone like girls, was an all-star. Not in women, little girls. If basketball just got he so likes granddaughters and shit. After the 90s, how do those players survive in multiple eras? And look he was Josh Giddy before Josh Giddy. His last year in the NBA averaged 26 and 5 on 45% shooting. Now get this. Five months later, after that season, LeBron James, who was a rookie, came into the NBA and put up numbers for nearly identical to Jordan. And that nigga's a rookie. The comparison of these two players is besides the fuck is you talking about? What I'm showing you guys is a guy LeBron James who's still playing in 2024. His rookie season was on par with Jordan, who was drafted. So how the fuck is that? 84. I mean, think about that. The 03 draft class. Melo, Josh, Wade, LeBron. They're five months removed from Michael Jordan playing pro basketball. Crazy to think about. And looking at one of these so-called fans who craps in the 90s, look at their breakdown, their basketball IQ, and just their utter genius when looking at MJ in 1991. This is the 91 NBA Finals. God damn, NBA. nigga, you wide open. Michael Jordan is left wide open. This is James Worthy, one of the all-time great bigs with Jordan Poole level shot chucking. Scottie Pippen out in trend. What? How the fuck do you what airball layup? I mean, this right here is the cheapest form of analysis. Watching one nigga, that's in the finals. Seeing some mid shots, you had like I watched one quarter of the turnovers. regular season then basketball, bro. Extrapolating it for an entire series, entire season, a career, 
even an entire decade. That right there is the definition of being an idiot. I mean, for example, look at Game 7 2016, Cavs versus okay. Warriors. By all accounts, the best see. basketball games of all time with major stakes and high intensity. So for one second, very quickly, let's keep that same energy and say we're done. Okay, come on, nigga. I mean, look at that. Clay Thompson, off-ball movement. One of the best shooters of all time. Can't create any space. Shoots it. Nigga, that's a hard first. shot. That nigga LeBron just airballed James, a layup. LeBron James, absolute freight train, 6'8", 260, that. versus Steph Curry, a midget. Gets to the ring. Nigga, and that's a miss. foul. I mean, this look at his great offense. LeBron the James, 90s, bro. IQ, basketball maestro. Gives it to Kevin Love in the post, one-on-one. -on -one. Bro, are these, are these are these are all contested shots, bro. None of these are layups. Of this era. Gets to the rim, shoots Look it, how hard that fucking shot is. Back. LeBron bro. James, yet again, the ISO king in his bag. Drives, posts up, back down, and Kareem Brick. This miss. nigga is gig rod in the 90s, bro. Because we can't the miss shots. Of this era. Or they can just airball and shit right? wide open shots that they bro. try to kill us. Step back three, hits nothing but backboard. I mean, that was a fluke, right? Steph, we know Steph's gonna make a shot right here, right? I mean, look, Kevin Love on him, that's easy barbecue chicken. Come on, cook, Steph, cook. And- What the fuck is you talking about, bro? If I was an absolute dumb- We're talking about missed shots here. Basketball. What we're talking it's about is missed layups and opportunities, I mean, fuck, boy. This nigga don't know what he's talking about, basketball. Bro. That's what you can do through low lights, cherry picking, and just false information. And look, when it comes to big time finals games, game sevens, a lot of those games were slugfest with bad possessions. I mean, that fourth quarter, Cleveland, they scored 18 points. Nigga, it's the finals, bro. State even Do you want them to shoot 80%? Then you're going to say there's no defense. And still, despite that, when the. Because it's good defense, retard. But looking oh back at the God. 90s trend, I got to look at this one video that just trashed Jordan and his era. And you watch this video, so many lies in only 60 seconds. Michael Jordan, the right hand bandit. He said he could not go left. And then yesterday, a different creator, he's on this account, Esquire Sports, it's pretty cool. He made his own video about the poor quality of basketball in the 1990s. And I've been finding all this really interesting because from what I've seen on TikTok, these games actually do look pretty bad. It does look like MJ can't go left. The deeper I dug, the more this became apparent. Isaiah Thomas has been quoted saying that the game plan for MJ in his early years was sent him left. But some people call Isaiah Thomas hater. Well, Kenny the Jet Smith said it too. George Gervin revealed that it took a while before Jordan became a consistent scorer with his left. So stopping right there, that is the utter state of TikTok. Wow, what a highlight. Fans. I mean, this guy in a matter of 30 seconds lied numerous times and omitted things that were vital for this argument. I mean, look at his first claim that Michael Jordan, it appears, can't go left. And who does he cite? Isaiah Thomas, Kenny Smith, and George Gervin. Now let's look at Kenny Smith first because this one is the most damning lie by this TikToker. Kenny Smith, I'm talking about Jordan, going left and his handle in general. He called it whack. When he called it that, was in college at UNC. He couldn't handle the rock, like, in college. MJ? No, he couldn't yeah. handle the rock. So, like, even even at times, I'll be like, we, we play pickup, like, oh, I got Mike. You're like, because I know I'm like, I'm get up on you. And then? And then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> he's the only guy that I know that his weaknesses that he had. In his, his career, nigga. His, his handle was crazy, and his jump shot was pure. If we're going to cite Kenny Smith for saying Jordan couldn't go left, had a whack handle, why would you ignore that clip only 10 seconds after he said that? Kind of strange. Now, looking at Isaiah, when he says Jordan, it was a game plan to force him left. I don't think that's some massive revelation they force a guy to go to his offhand. I mean, for any player in the league, they have tendencies. Now, that is nasty. I ain't even going to catch. Your job is to limit that as much but as possible. But that's young Jordan. And for a guy when that nigga wasn't Jordan, winning, bro, because he had hair and shit. Jordan rules, it makes sense to force him left. Because when he went left, hard to pass out of, and for him, hard to shoot off of. Now, with that being said, Mike with Jordan going left, was still pretty damn great. I mean, listen to Mike for I know we got some analytics. Break it down. On the wings, we're going to push him to the elbow. 
and we're not gonna let him. Damn, my ass. Four, three, two, one. Right. He's been good on the ass, though. Number two, when he's on top, we're gonna influence him to his left. There are three areas on the floor the Pistons need to be concerned about. He's sensational when he dribbles to his right. He's only great when he goes left. They will force him left as much as possible from the top of the circle area. Mike Fratello, who called those series, watched all those series. He said point blank Jordan was sensational going right and only great when going left. What does that mean? Yes, going left compared to right, he was worse. But was it bad? Of course not. I mean, look at Kevin Durant, one of the best scorers of all time. When he played Boston in 2022, the Celtics would double team him and force him to go right. Because if Katie goes left, he's virtually unstoppable. But he's a right-handed player, dumbass. But you just great. proved our point. He goes left. They forced him to now go the way side he's side already side designed side. to go, nigga. And again with this quote. Because I've got so good on my left. We're not giving you the whole story. As Gervin 86, yes, played with Jordan. LeBron is ambidextrous. Gervin said pretty clearly, Mike in the beginning could not go left. That's it. Okay, LeBron. And when that nigga was said, two, that nigga was, was going left, bro. Right until he made adjustments. And once he did... Only oh, adjustment that my nigga LeBron right has a quiet bang in Not even for the game throws. film, just the quotes from Gervin, Kenny Smith, being out of context. My nigga still get nervous at the free throw line and shit. Why but other than that... Guys? I think that's kind of wild. So I decided to do what very few people do when it comes to MJ discourse. I went back and watched one of his games. Not just that, I charted it too. I chose game one of the 91 finals. It's on YouTube and it's a good MJ game. 36 points, 14 of 24 from the field. I wanted to see how he got those points. Specifically when he dribbled, so catch and shoot is not here. All right, so, so he played James Harden put well. on the screen. They indicate how a possession ended. Blue means it ended in a pass. Red is a miss, green is a make, orange is a turnover. The arrows indicate which hand somebody is dribbling with. Yellow arrows are the right hand. Left Maybe hand is kind of pink. It kind of looks purple. I'm about to show the chart one half. Because you did not want to do that shit at school, but now you're doing that shit is the right side. I didn't put jump shots here. This is any time Jordan dribbled twice or more. That's a lot of right-handed dribbling, but it's the right side of the court. We'll cut him some slack. Only five lefty possessions, all going left, four passes and a miss. Left side will probably be better, right? Guys, I think the allegations might be true. That's a lot of yellow, dude. On the left side of the court, that's a lot. Now, stopping it right there, I'm not gonna get my crayons out, but when it comes at overall graphic, it's not enough for these guys for Jordan to score, have a good game. Now for Jordan, he has to go right hand and left hand equally and dominate on both sides of the court 50-50. I mean, when it comes to takes like these, it makes you wonder, have guys like this actually played sports? Did you? If you're an offensive player. Did you play sports in the 2000s, bro? Right, what are you going to do the majority of the time? You're going to go right. The defense forces you left, and you're great going right. Yes, sometimes you might cross over, get back, to your right hand. And I don't want to downplay analytics player tracking, but when it comes to critiques like this, are you actually watching a player to see how good they play, or watching a player to see they play how you want them to play? And if we're into the cherry picking stats, looking at one game, one series, I mean, go on YouTube right now, look at Michael Jordan left hand finishes. I mean, Jordan has compilations. Okay, y'all trying to say my nigga LeBron's not clutch. Do you want me to react to one of them videos next, boys? But also, and I'm sure that we can find millions of videos of Gervin and Clutch. Have shown, wouldn't he have been a bad okay. basketball player? And I think that's an interesting question, but I do kind of have an answer. It's something that Jason Williams touched on before. See, as Williams, a former point guard, pointed out, back then the defense was different. For decades, the NBA required teams to have man-to-man -man defense across the board. You could send a hard double, but you couldn't have guys hanging off of their man. That was an illegal defense. And so what would happen is, like this Reddit post says, for teams like the Bulls that had one guy who could get buckets, they would leave him in isolation on the one side of the court and let him go to work. Now, stopping right there, one of the biggest myths, biggest misnomers of the 1990s. In the 90s and the 80s, yes, you could play zone defense. And to be fair to this guy, yes, illegal defense in the rule book was a rule for those decades. But much like traveling, carrying, it was only called here and there. And if you watch the games, specifically the Pistons and Knicks, 
versus Jordan, they played so much zone. And here's the mind-boggling thing. This guy early in the video pointed out Isaiah Thomas and the Pistons. What were the Jordan rules? The entire defense focused on Jordan, showing help, shading to his side, focusing on Jordan exclusively, ignoring his teammates. And one of the big time myths about illegal defense. Guys like this, they the defender. They had to be like glue on the offensive player and the space. Everybody wanted to insane. ride his dick when he came out that he last day and shit. That should have been his true. last time coming it's out. Some shit times, like that. Sagging off their man, showing help to stop Jordan. I mean, look at this clip right here. A glorified 1 2 2 zone. Per the rule book, this right here is illegal defense. Look at this clip right here. Bill Lambeer in the paint camping out, which should be called a legal defense. Because according to the rule book, not attached to a man and not committed to a double team. And what Lambeer is doing right there is pretty noteworthy. What he's doing is clogging the paint and the lane for someone like Jordan. Back in the 80s and the 90s, there was no three second rule. In today's NBA, there is. If you want to talk actual zone defenses, the you can't play true zone this whole with a time, three right? second rule. And the idea of zone defense is just so hard to beat, so unbreakable, it would stop Michael Jordan of all players. I just do not buy that. I mean, look at Luka Doncic, who's played overseas. That's the reason why we know how to break down the zone defense. The sites and the big time advantages playing in the NBA. I always say it's because of the rules. Last minutes, uh, the three point, uh, three seconds in the pain, defense is huge. I don't think people realize how huge that is. Because uh, you know, when I'm isolating, I watch the defender in the pain. So he he gotta go out at some point. So when he he's going out, I another ad. We about to run it. Two, one. Damn. So they can just sit in the pain and overseas and shit. Damn, that was a nice move, bro. I can't even That nigga's just a mid-range king, boy. But that nigga shooting the whole time, bro. But they did almost the same damn percentage. Damn. So that nigga was just killing them y'all niggas. But my nigga LeBron doing that now. All right, Stash. You getting killed now.
That nigga said, what the fuck? <laughs> no cap. Watch it. Uh, guys in the post? These niggas shoot threes now. In Kyrie. How so how often does that nigga get in the post? Cause he should be in the post more, to be honest. Niggas a beast. But he's just showing post clips of Joel and B, cause duh, everybody plays a post game, bruh. But Joel and B need to be in the post more. Jokic is not even known for his post. So what y'all niggas think? I definitely gonna rock with my nigga Brian as the GOAT, bruh. He's been the GOAT since that nigga came out his mom's womb. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. So y'all niggas need to get off Michael Jordan's dick. Let's make a video of LeBron. Somebody out there make one. And I'll react to that bitch. I'll be back tomorrow.